Do you really want to use all these spices just to make a decent steak? You know, tonight I'm going to show you how to use a barbecue rub to make a delicious steak with only one bottle. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Mick Brown and welcome to Barbecue Rescues. Today, I am in beautiful Shreveport, Louisiana and the location is the world famous Fairfield Place. This hotel was built in 1870. It's the oldest bed and breakfast in Shreveport. And I'm telling you man, the food here is delicious by famous chef John Carreri. This chef is going for it. She's been all around. And today he invited me to do a little barbecue rescue in terms of he cooks everything in the oven, on the stove, but he doesn't have a grill. And what you gonna do without a grill? You're gonna call Chef Mick to come to the rescue, right? So get ready for Barbecue Rescues. Stay tuned. Hi, welcome back to Barbecue Rescues. I'm Chef Mick Brown, and I'm here with my new friend, Chef John Carreri. And we're here at Fairfield Place in Shreveport, Louisiana. I'm telling you, the food here is off the hook. Everyone raves about this place for, you know, the food for the guests as well as the catering. So we're going to hear about a little bit more about it a little later. But for now, I think a little earlier you saw something about rub, you know, and using a bunch of different spices in your kitchen, which is fine. It's nice to have a big cabinet. But occasionally it's nice to just do it really simple and have it all that you need in one bottle. So that's what rub is all about. Of course, tonight we're using my rub, which, you know, I would recommend. But feel free to use any rub you have on hand or any rub you want to make. So for now, tonight we're making the perfect steak. So you see here, we have a fresh, beautiful ribeye. It's all ready to go. And I'm going to start seasoning it. And I'll just give you the three steps real quick, okay? Number one, it's going to be Worcestershire sauce. Number two, it's going to be some nice barbecue rub. Number three is going to be some rosemary. And then we're going to finish off a little bit of salt and fresh pepper. So in the meantime, John, could you tell us a little bit more about Fairfield Place? Well, I mean, I was listening to the, all the rubs and everything, and God, what everybody loves to be rubbed. <laughs> so anyway, Especially steaks. Steaks, yeah. So having your meat rubbed is a, <laughs> another one. But anyway, so Fairfield Place was the, is the oldest bed and breakfast in Shreveport. It's been in operation since about 1985. And it is the oldest remaining house on Fairfield, the historic district in Shreveport, built in 1870. Um, we have weddings, we have rehearsal dinners, we have meetings, we have functions, we have retreats here. Uh -huh. And um, it's like a stand, it's like a home away from home kind of place. It's a, a staycation. We give everybody a little lanyap, we call it. Lanyap. Lanyap. What's that? In French, that's a little something extra. So we are, you know, you're food and your snacks and your waters and your sodas and anything you want is right here at Fairfield Place and it just is included in the price of your room. Uh, I happen to be fortunate enough to stay here and this place is amazing. It's just like home. I mean anything you want. You want water, you want soda, you want juice, whatever. It's all here and it's all included with your room. And um, can I say something about wet bar or do you not want to um, give away that secret? Uh, we'll, we'll save that for later. Okay, bar. I swear, one o'clock in the morning, you can get up, roll out of bed, roll down the stairs, and hit his wet bar. This is that kind of place. Well, and so we sometimes we cook with wine, so we pour it in a glass, and then <laughs> some of it actually makes it into the steak. Sometimes it, we just drink it while we're cooking. Hey, break it up. We got some wine glasses. I mean, you yeah. know, we are cooking. You know, making dinner here. You know. So, yeah. um, so so far, uh, I'm getting back to the steak for a second. I've already put my Worcester in there. I put some rub heavily so it's nice and seasoned. And the nice thing about steaks is they don't take hours and hours to marinate. I mean, a good 10, 15 minutes and you get a lot of flavor. So next, I'm gonna take the rosemary and just sprinkle it on there. You see it's roughly chopped, you know, I'm no uh, perfect, uh, you know, portion chef. You know, you just get that flavor in there. So you spin it and you put a little more in there. Make sure you get a lot of uh, nice rosemary flavor. You rub it in there? Rub it in. Right. You're gonna finish, you wanna put some salt and pepper on there for me? Yeah, we're gonna get a little fresh ground pepper. Fresh ground pepper. Fresh ground pepper. That's and good. I prefer to use Himalayan pink salt. Oh, that's the best. That is the best. Although, 
if you have not tried all Himalayan. the minerals in the in the in the sea salt is uh, yeah the Himalayan is wonderful. You don't put a lot of salt on there, but there you go. Just kind of yeah, that looks good. On there. That looks good. I'm gonna pepper that too, right? Yeah, and then we'll have a little pepper in there, a little ground pepper. Yeah, and a nice thing about this rub is it's all superfoods and Himalayan sea salt. I mean, if you have to use salt, like I said, this is the most nutritious, delicious salt you can use on the planet. So it's really good. So anyway, so we just got a brand new grill. You may have seen a little earlier. And so right now we're going to get ready to finish marinating the rest of these steaks, get it ready to go. And then we'll meet you outside at the grill and start grilling. Okay, so the next step in the recipe for the perfect steak is to go ahead and sear the steak on the really hot side of the grill. Then you're going to move it to the slow side of the grill so it gets some that smoke up. So since this is a brand new grill, we don't want to experiment with all of our expensive ribeyes. So we're going to start with one ribeye and see how it goes. So once again, we're going to open the grill. You see if my second hobo pouch that's smoking starts to smell it now. So that means it's time to put some meat on the grill. So you take your steak, and for a perfect sear, normally you want to get that 45 degree angle line. So I'm going to put it on this middle part, which is the hot part, it's next to the smoke. And I'm going to put it diagonally like this. Oh, that's smelling amazing already. Just one second on the grill. So now I'm going to close it, lift, lift the heat and the smoke get to it a little bit. Then we're going to rotate it. One minute, okay? One minute flat because this is really, really hot. Okay, the steak has been cooking now for about two minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it to get those good grill marks. So you just pick it up and you turn it. And what I like to do is actually move it to a virgin part of the grill. I thought you'd like that. So it's fresh and hot and it's, it's, it's not coming off of what's sticking to the new grill. So we're gonna turn that side for another two minutes. And what this does is this sears in the outside of the steak. So the outside is sealed in and it's searing in those juices. And they're going to be nice and juicy once you take it off. So that's why I sear it on both sides. And then in a couple of minutes, I'm going to move it to the cool side of the grill and just let the smoke and that flavor get all the way in there. And it's going to be amazing. Stay tuned. So I just, I just flipped the steak and I got both the agnos going so now I'm going to flip it and do the other side so you see yeah it's a beautiful steak nice and juicy you can see the grill mark so now I'm going to go to another version part of the grill and you see how it's hardened up there it smells that's, good. that's that's the seal that's going to seal it in and I know some people get tempted to stick holes in with the fork to soak how tenderize the steak but never ever do that because if you put holes in the steak all the juices are going to come out so you want to keep it solid and keep moving to fresh parts of the grill to get those grill marks. So I'm going to close it again. So how long are we going to take? Is it going to take to cook that? I'm really getting hungry. Um, the searing, uh, how do you like your steak? I forgot to ask. I'm medium rare to rare. Okay, I'm going to have something for you. Give me just a minute. It's ready. The smell is driving me nuts. <laughs> okay, I got something for you. Just give me a minute. Does anyone know what this is? So earlier, John was asking me, how do you know how long to cook it? And this is the answer. It's called an instant read thermometer. And this particular one tells you whether it's rare, well, or medium rare. So I'm gonna take it now and put it on the steak. And as the steak cooks, the needle will move and it'll let us know exactly when to stop cooking. So I'm gonna do that right now. And I'll point it right here so you can see. Sorry. In the middle, the needle's starting to move, and you can see that it's still in the rare range. Still moving, it's stopping right there, rare. So right now we know we're at a rare steak. Now right now, it could be considered medium rare by some people, so it'll be ready just a couple minutes now. about that. So I once again I'd love to thank our host, Chef John Carreri.
Thanks again for joining us for Barbecue Rescue. My name is Nick Brown, and this is Chef John Carreri here at Fearful Place, the best bed and breakfast in Shreveport, and the oldest, and they have the best food. So come anytime you're in town, and we'll see you soon.